We're always told to set up an Actors Access profile, but we're usually never given instructions on how to set it up properly. Now, I learned how to do it over time, and I'll give you a behind-the-scenes view of my Actors Access profile so that it can help agents and casting directors see your value to give you more job opportunities. So I started my first Actors Access profile in 2005. My agent told me to set it up. However, they gave me no guidance on how to create a good profile. So I did the best that I could, but I ended up, it was a mess because basically it didn't have enough information, didn't have pertinent information. It was too much information. I had bad reels, no clips. But all of that changed when I interned for a casting office and then later a theatrical agent's office. And then I learned what casting directors and agents look for on these profiles. And from there, I was able to streamline my profile, making it very straightforward for casting directors to find the information they needed, which opened up a door for more audition opportunities. And my motto is make it easy for employers to say yes to us and I'm gonna show you how. But before I show you my setup, I'll do a brief introduction to Actors Access for new actors. And if you're a veteran actor and you want to bypass that part, there are chapter markers in the description for you to go on ahead and skip ahead. So Actors Access is the actors branch of Breakdown Services founded by Gary Marshall in the 1990s. And it's a place where actors can submit for roles without having agent representation or with having agent representation. It's just a great place to feel like you have autonomy. Actors Access will offer all types of jobs opportunities for union, for non-union, actors in the North American major markets like New York, LA, Canada, the Midwest, uh, the Southeast, uh, uh, Hawaii and more. And there's paid and unpaid jobs there. Now it's predominantly independent, like unscripted, scripted, uh, uh, web series, uh, independent films and things like that. It's hardly ever, you'll hardly ever see like a major studio or feature film um, be presented there. But every once in a while, it will be listed there. So always keep your eye out because those roles are really mostly found on breakdown services, which can only be accessed by agents and managers. So how does Actors Access work? You sign up to create a free profile with essential information. They give you two free flexible photos, meaning you can swap those photos out as often as you wish for free. You get one seven second slate shot. Your resume information can be upput and also your sizes and your size cards. Now, when you go to set up your Actors Access, you'll want to set aside some time because say maybe about two hours or depending on how many television and film credits you have, because I'll admit it is tedious, it's monotonous, it's boring, and you'll wanna probably take some breaks in between. But if you have everything that you need right there, you should breeze through it pretty, pretty easily. So now let's talk about the add-on costs. So for demo reels, also known as media, the cost for each one minute reel is $22. But if you have multiple clips under a minute, you wanna put them in your cart all at once and pay at the same time. Because if you pay for them separately, you'll wind up paying $22 for 24 seconds, $22 for 30 seconds. So put them all together so that you can just pay for one minute for $22. Now you'll probably wind up having more than one minute, but I'm just trying to let you know, you, you don't want to have to keep um, paying more than you need to pay. Because one of the things that uh, Actors Access does is they consider one second a minute. So don't think that just because you your footage is only 22 seconds that you're going to pay $11. No, they consider one second is a minute. And if your reel is saying two minutes and one second or three minutes and one second, get rid of that second because that's going to take you in the next minute with an additional $22 for space that you don't need to pay for. Slate shot. Now a slate shot accompanies your headshot. It's a brief clip introducing yourself to the casting director. And it's said that the submissions with a slate shot will be placed at the top of a casting director's submission list. However, many casting directors have stated that they review all of their submissions carefully and they ignore slate shots. Therefore, there's no need to worry about being at the top of their submission list. Moreover, introducing yourself might not always work in your favor, especially if your personality in that slate shot doesn't fit the character that they're casting at that moment. So save your money on that. Now, if you wanna add more headshots, you got the two free, but anything after that will cost you $10 to upload and they don't allow you to switch those out once you pay for them. So you wanna choose them carefully. You can remove them or hide them, but that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about the annual membership versus individual submissions. 
When it comes to self-submitting your media, keep in mind that there are costs involved. The self-submission for each submission is $3 per submission. And if you add a reel, it'll cost you an additional $5. However, if you plan to submit regularly, the annual membership fee is better because it's $68 and it includes unlimited media submissions. So consider this. If you plan to submit one to 10 times a month, it's definitely better to get an annual membership. And also if you're sag after member, you'll receive 20% off the $68 membership. And it's built in when you sign up. Now, in my uneducated actor access days, I paid a lot of unnecessary money for a demo reel that was poorly edited. It had low production value. It didn't even showcase my work that great. I should have waited. And then every time I got new headshots, I'd choose all these headshots and put them up at $10 a pop and they didn't even serve my niche. So all I'm saying is to save money down the line by uploading only your best materials. It's better to wait because you'll save money. So speaking of reels, If you need more information on how to build a good demo reel, check out my 10 things that casting directors look for in an actor reel. The link is in the description and maybe it'll be up here somewhere if I remember to do that. So here's a little gossip. Actors Access holds the majority service used for all major studio and network TV casting in America. I've heard rumors that Gary Marsh acquired all the other submission companies that used to exist to monopolize the market on audition services, with the exception of two companies, Casting Frontier and Casting Networks, that are mostly comprised of commercial castings and, quite frankly, are their own monopoly. However, in 2007, there was a massive shift when Fox Studios and its subsidiary entertainment companies abruptly switched their casting software provider from breakdown services to casting networks. Now, I don't know why they did that to this day, but if I had to speculate, I would think maybe, maybe Fox has an invested interest in casting networks, or maybe there was beef with Gary Marsh. I'm speculating. Anyway, a common question that comes up is, if I have an agent... Do I need an actor's access profile or membership? Well, yes, you still need to have a completed and current profile because your profile is connected to Breakdown Services, which is the mother company that allows agents and managers to submit you. But a membership is up to you because most actors who are represented by theatrical agents, they don't self-submit themselves theatrically. It's simply a place where they house their materials for their agent's use but you'll still need to upload your reels no matter what. Overall, the best thing about Actors Access is that it gives all actors, young, inexperienced, veteran, unrepresented, represented the autonomy to submit themselves without waiting for an agent to give them auditions. Now, this video is not sponsored by Actors Access, nor is it an ad. I'm just a big proponent for self-submissions. In Actors Access, I've been able to get some really great paid opportunities to get footage and to work a little bit more often than waiting for an agent, sometimes when I don't have an agent. Here's a list of items you'll want to have ready as you set up or revise your actor's access. Two or more of your best professional headshots that look like you today that are color corrected with minor Photoshop. You want to have your resume, a list of special skills, and your demo reels. So if you're new to actor's access, the first thing you want to do is register. So here's the page that talks about the two memberships. There's free And then there's the $68 Actor Access Plus, where you could pay $68 for the year or you could pay $9.99 for a month. Of course, the $68 is a much better value. And if you're a SAG-AFTRA member, you can get 20% off and they'll have you type in your SAG-AFTRA number when you go to register. So you see everything is the same up until we get to submissions. Now it says $2 submissions here. It used to be $3. Maybe they brought it down, but we want the unlimited if we plan on submitting ourselves. And if we don't plan on submitting ourselves, then we could just go with the free one in the meantime until your agent requires that you want, that they want more from you. But either way, you would probably have to add more photos and you'll definitely have to add your reels. So now let's go into the account and you can see my back office, this is everything. This is, I'm in Actors Access Plus. This is home, breakdowns. You see United States and Canada. When you go to United States, you see Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, San Fran, and all of these other places across the US. 
And then if you go to Canada, you've got some great territories there as well. East and West, Vancouver, Toronto, and so much, so many others. So we've got tools, submissions, auditions, services, contact us, EcoCast Live. Let's go to tools. So we have tools here, my account, contact information, manage profile, manage representation, email, custom link, order history. All of that is also right here where you're signed in. So I'm just gonna go through these really quickly. It says check your C-mail. Your C-mail is like an email, um, but it's a casting email. So it's a C-mail. So anytime you submit to something and you get a, whether probably an audition for it, you're going to get a C-mail. And so you can either check it here or you can go up here in the upper right hand corner to check it there as well. Now we'll go to you view your cart. That's when you buy photos or add photos or add your reel. Manage representation is if you get a new rep, you would go in here and then you would add that rep. You would look them up and so on and so forth. View your account. We go to view your account. This is the page where you have to let Actors Access know what part of the world you're in. So I have this checked because I like to receive advanced role notifications that tell me when a project in my category is released. I want to receive an email so that I can pounce on that really quickly. I can read it and I can see if it's something that I want to submit to. Because the thing is about submissions is the quicker and the earlier that you can get in, um, the faster or the better your odds of getting an audition or getting that opportunity. Now, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm also a local hire in New York, but I don't really travel to New York that much, so I don't have that checked. If you're somebody who's a local hire in any of these territories, you can check those as well. Let's go on down here. Now, uh, Actors Access will send you a lot of emails, and so one of the ways to negate that is to tell it what you don't want to receive. And so here are all the things I do not want to be notified on. Non-union projects, reality TV projects, student film projects, real people projects, background roles, and non-paying roles. Um, I'm at a point in my career where I, I do get paid um, for, for my skill. So I'm no longer um, interested in non-paying roles. But when I first started my career, I would do non-paying roles because I needed the experience and I most times needed the footage. In terms of updates, I like to be known, notified about updates. Remember, I t spoke about C-mail. Notify me by email of any new C-mail so that I know, I, so that I don't miss any job opportunities. And then EcoCast reminders are anytime you get a self-tape audition, it goes through EcoCast. And so the casting director will send you a different email with the EcoCast information, the self-tape information. And as you get closer to the date, if you haven't updated or submitted yet or uploaded your information yet, then you'll get an eCast reminder. And I like to receive those reminders because I'm forgetful these days. Also, my membership in my billing. And then you can see down here, I paid $54.40 because I'm a sag after member and um, I pay for the year. And so I'll be due in April. Now let's go to manage my profile. And I'm going to start with, you can do about me. And uh, this is where you type in your union membership, your gender, your race, and then a host of many, many special skills uh, that are listed here. I don't have a whole lot. That's why you barely see anything checked here. Uh, but if there's something that's not here that you want to fill in, you can come down to additional skills and write it in here. I have nine plus years of improv. I'm a comedy person, so I want the comedy people to know that. I'm also a content creator, sketch comedy, writer, director, and have a YouTube channel because sometimes that factors into a breakdown, and so it's here. And then any disabilities you may have, you can save all of that here. The more honest you can be, the better it is for you and the better it is for casting. Now let's go to manage my profile. You have about me, resume, size card, photos, and media. So we're in about me, let's head to my resume. So as you can see, 
everything is already filled out, but they tell you exactly what to do and how to populate your resume on Actors Access. So suggested content, the first column is the project title, which you see that here. The second column is the role name and the role size, which you see that here. And the third column is director, project, produ production company or theater, which you see that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you really quickly how to, if this was a blank slate, all that would be here would be header, insert, delete. So if we hit insert, that gives you a new box. If you turn that into a header by checking the box, that gives you a header. So if I was to start my resume over, this is what I would do. In LA, we go television first, film, theater, commercials, new media, and all the other stuff goes below that. So let's say if I'm starting a new one here, we'll call it television even though I already have television there. And then because I'm wanting to add bars underneath it, I would hit the insert underneath, and then that gives me these three spaces. Now, if I ever wanted to move these things, there's these little arrows here that allow you to tap it and go down and come up and so on and so forth. So right now I'm going to delete that. So let's look through my resume. I have a lot of co-stars and I am prepared and ready to up level to guest star recur recurring. Um, so as I start to look for an agent, that's really what I'll be focused on. And one of my real clips shows more of um, a guest star role. It's longer, it has more, uh, a, a lot of different emoji, a range of emotions in it. And so I'll show you that later, not the full reel, but I'll show you uh, the reels. So here we go. I've got all of my television here. And then I've got all of my film. I don't have a lot of films, but I did create a header here because both of these films had a, had a lot of laurels. They had a great uh, festival run. And I like to put both films combined, collected 36 laurels at festivals, which is really decent and some notable festivals as well. New media is like anything that's like a web series, mostly web series. So all three of these are, or excuse me, four of those are web series or sketch comedy that's right here. And then sketch comedy live on stage. These are all of the shows that I performed in live on stage. For commercials, you don't want to name the commercials. You don't want to write the competitors. You don't want anybody. You don't want Coke to be mad that you had a Pepsi commercial in 1992. So basically, we write conflicts available. I have booked 40 plus national commercials. I put that. And then I also put the commercial the directors of the commercials that I've worked on who are film directors or known for comedy. So that's three. these three gentlemen here. I've got some theater and then I do all my training and then I do everything just very streamlined, just basically by category. So here's scene study. These are the teachers in LA that I've worked with. Improv, these are the schools that I've gone to. Uh, scene study, oh, I can actually, I'm gonna change this, but that's UCLA, some Shakespeare, some Groundlings, some Meisner. And then I have like a couple of honors where in 2019, I was part of a, diverse, a, a huge diversity fellowship at Second City. And also I was a recipient of UCB's uh, diversity scholarship. So I have that there. And then for professional biography, I just wanna give casting directors or agents an idea of what I usually play. So I usually play the sage, authoritative, quirky, sardonic, and brass tacks, which will be evidenced in all of my real clips. Now let's go back up to my tools, manage profile, and let's hit that photos. So these are all my photos. Uh, right now I have one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. And they all give a different feel and a different element. I don't have a whole lot of photos. I know a lot, sometimes people have 10, 20, 30 photos. Sometimes they all look alike, which is not good. But if you can have a nice range of photos, that's good. Um, and I actually wouldn't suggest that you, if you don't have an agent, to put a whole lot of uh, photos here because once you get an agent, they may either want you to do new headshots or they may choose new headshots from your previous headshot session. And it's just easier and more cost effective if you let them choose and then you populate your your page with their choices. Um, one of the things I want to point out is that all of these pictures 
are really cropped in because when casting directors are looking at these, imagine if there's 3,000 of these photos of different people for one role. So the more that you can crop in on your face and get closer as opposed to being pushed away, the better it'll work in your favor. And so the way that you go and you crop a photo is you hit manage photo and you come on down here to hit edit thumbnail. You see this little crop box. And so that's actually pulled out. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more so I can get more of like what I have already and then save the modifications. There we go and then close you would check theatrical, commercial, or other, depending on what it is. If you want it to be the main photo, you can make it the default. And so I'm gonna close that. And you see that photo is even more close than the others. I may go through and do the others as close as this one. Now, if you wanted to rearrange the photos, all you gotta do is drag and drop. And then once you decide on what it is that you love, you hit uh, save sort order, and then it will remain there. Now. When you pay for pictures, they pretty much stay here in perpetuity. I don't know why. So if we go to removed photos, these are all of the photos that I've uploaded since 2007. They're just here. Thankfully, they're all professional pictures and they look like me um, at different stages of my life. But they just stay here. Sometimes I'll go back in and I'll pull some out. Sometimes I've paid for some and I wish I hadn't because they have they weren't retouched. So always make sure that your the picture that you update is going to be something that you're going to want to stick with or for uh, that that'll be okay to be in the back because casting directors, agents, and managers can actually see your removed photos and your removed reels. I don't know what that's about. All right, so now let's go to media. So I recently uploaded uh, my comedy reel, my recent comedy reel, and my recent theatrical reel, and I just put them at the top, and I just plainly state them as such. Now, as I go further down, you get to see that I have these clips. Actually, yeah, clips. So uh, I give the clips of what I'm playing a title because a lot of times casting directors are looking for something very specific. So if a casting director comes in and they're looking for a cop and they need a no nonsense cop, they can go through here, investigative cop, no, oh, brusque cop, let me look at that. And then they can, uh, preview video, and then they can tap that and then get an idea of me uh, as a brusque cop in comedy, or I have one also in drama. So that's what all of that is. Now I'm gonna show you really quickly, now here are all of my inactive reels that casting and managers and agents can see. They're here. But let's go back up because I wanna show you how to clip out a reel. So I'm gonna go to my uh, theatrical reel. Let's, oh, actually, let's create clips. That's right here. I'm gonna create clips. And basically, can I hit it? Oh, it's loading. It's taken, it's taken a moment. Let me turn the volume down as I'm talking. So you're gonna hit play, and you'll set your clip to start. I started a little late. Set clip to start. And then once you just let that play out, you can actually scrub it to where you want it to end. Boop, 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 boop. This is that clip that I told you it has, it's more of a guest star role. Get that there or get it right at the end and then you would set the clip end and then you would title it and then you would attach it to your resume. But I'm not gonna do that right now. So let's reset, let's come up out of there. Let's go to my tools. And I want you to create a custom link. You go there, you add your name, you save it, and then you preview it. And this is what casting and agents and managers see. Your full profile. Tawana Floyd, Sagaftra, here are the photos. Now you can see the difference. That photo is really much more cropped in than the others. So I'm going to go back and crop in the others. And then here's my resume, just as I showed it to you. It's very clean, it's streamlined, it's easy to read. And as we go back up to, oh, here's that little bit of nine plus years of improv. And then here's my niche, sage, authoritative, quirk, sedonic, um, and brass tacks. Let's come back up here. And in this little button here, we have my media, comedy reel 2024, 
theatrical reel 2024, I learned that from a casting director. A lot of times they like to know how current the reel is. So if they can see that it's this year, they know that what they're saying, I pretty much am going to look like that uh, if they call me in. And then you get to see clip, clip, clip. This makes it easy for casting to get to what it is that they're looking for. I'm going to add more clips here actually because I have more footage that I haven't uploaded yet. But they get to uh, to to get in and get out, find out what, have their questions answered, and then either give me an audition time slot or pass or maybe give me one later. I hope this information will be a helpful guide as you start to build or revise your actor's access. And if you still feel lost, I'm here to help you. I offer 45-minute one-on-one actor access audits via Zoom for $45. No matter where you are in your career, I can help you build an incredible actor's access profile that agents, managers, and casting directors will find attractive. The link to my scheduler is in the description. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification button. Be sure to check out the podcast, Acting Lessons Learned, wherever you find your podcast. Next up... I'll take the deep dive into one of my favorite topics, which is getting good headshots. And you'll want to tune in as I share my headshot session pre-production process, because everything starts with in-depth pre-production. And I think this is the most significant step many of my actor friends skip or don't know that they need to pay attention to. Thank you for watching. You can catch the next video right here and I'll see you soon. Oh, and remember, a little clarity goes a long way. Remember, let's make it easy for them to hire us. Be well.